Everyone, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, where today I am talking about a battery station. This one is from Sowaki, and this is the G500, 500 watt hour power station. With this power station, what you are looking at here essentially is a gigantic lithium ion battery. The 500 watt hour translates to 137,700 milliamp hours. That's quite a bit of juice inside of a rather small form factor device. Now, I've been testing this out for the last three, four months, and there are some pros and cons to go over. Before I touch upon those, let's just take a look at the device and talk about stats and features. I tell you what, folks, let me go ahead and say this. Unlike many videos which you may have seen already on YouTube in regards to power stations, I've actually tested this out. I've had this for a long time. I've put it through its paces, and I'm going to tell you what is good and bad about it. Most of the videos on YouTube when it comes to overlanding, power stations, or any other product, they are from the mailbox to the video, and that's it. They really aren't reviews. They open the box and they're like, wow, this is really great. I never used it, but it's awesome. You should buy it. I'm not like that. I'm not going to tell you to buy anything here on the channel. I'm going to share my thoughts, the pros and cons that I've observed while using this. You can make up your own mind from there. That's what this channel is all about. With that being said, Let's take a look at it. In terms of weight, this comes in at roughly 15.1 pounds. It does have a handle, raises up. The construction of this is a combination of plastic and some sort of metal. It might be aluminum, but I'm not entirely sure. That means that the quality of this, as far as appearances go, and durability and ruggedness is very good. But there is a con when it comes to this material, and we will talk about that in just a minute. So the weight, 15 pounds. Let's take a look at the dimensions. So it's about seven and a quarter inches deep, eight and a quarter inches tall, and it's about 11 inches wide. On the side, you have a vent. On the other side, a vent. Nothing on the back side, nothing on the bottom. Taking a look here at the front, let's talk about the charging ports. This is how you charge the device, and there's three ways to do this with the two ports. You can plug into the wall, you can plug into DC power with a cigarette port, or you can use solar. That is the Anderson power pole port. This is your power switch. To turn the device on, you simply push and hold for a second. Everything comes to life. Then you can select your outputs. Next, you have the inverter, and you have two 110 AC ports. 2.7 amps, 110 volts, 300 watt max. Now these are split 150, 150. Now while these are a 300 watt max, this will allow for a 600 watt surge so that when you turn on certain devices, it won't turn itself off in a form of surge protection. Next up, you have the USB. You have two full size and a type C right here. Quick charge, five to 12 volt DC, 18 watt max. Next, you have the two five and a half millimeter DC ports. Then you have the 12 volt DC out, which is 10 amps. Everyone knows this port to be the cigarette lighter port. So let's focus on the screen here. As you can see, it's a little bit scratched up from my use, but that's okay. Still completely usable. To turn it on, press and hold the power button. So there you go. Displayed on the screen, you have power coming into the device to charge it and power going out. And you have that in the form of DC and also AC currents. That's because you can run these ports at the same time. Over here, you can see how much juice is remaining inside of the device, and that is broken into chunks. Instead of having a percentage, you have these bars, which are not exact. So when you look at this screen here, you will never know exactly how much power is remaining in your device. Each bar translates to 20% and there's five bars. Before jumping to the pros and cons and talking about the solar aspect of this device, let me go ahead and plug a few things in here so you can see how the screen works when it's actually outputting some power. So I'll take the cigarette lighter charger and plug in my phone. I'll take a camera battery charger, plug that into the USB. And that means that I need the battery that's in this camera. So I will be right back. So the battery, I'll put that in the charger. Here in a second, I will turn all this on. In the other USB port, I will plug in one of my LED lights. This is what I use for truck camping. And lastly, I will plug in this electric blanket. 
which I also use for overlanding. I tell you what folks, sleeping inside of your vehicle is like sleeping inside of a tin can. Even with temperatures that aren't that cold, like 40 degrees. I tell you what, one of these blankets can make a huge difference. And talking about power consumption here for a second, one of these can run all night long on high and not consume very much power. It's pretty impressive. Anyways, let's go ahead and turn this on with all of these devices connected. So the device is on, press and hold. The light is on, my phone is charging. It'll be done in 19 minutes. That's the DC side. Now let's flip over to the AC. It's on. Oh, also my battery is charging. Forgot about that. There's the electric blanket and it's on high. Looking at the screen, you can see that the DC port is outputting 11 watts. The AC port with the electric blanket is putting out around 96, 94, it kind of jumps around. With the electric blanket, once you turn it on, it surges to warm up, and then once it gets to that level that you put it on, it kind of levels out and it doesn't consume that much power. Already, the blanket's warming up, the light's going, my battery's charging on my camera, for my camera, and my phone is charging. That means that you can use all of these ports combined. And the fact that it shows the output on the screen is awesome. Showing all this off, let's go ahead and jump to the review, starting with the pros. The overall quality of this device is very good. I've gone hands-on with some units from other companies that really have a lot of plastic to them. They feel very fragile, not this one. The construction's good, the materials are good as well. As far as power goes, it's a good capacity. While presenting you with a device that is still portable, manageable, it's not super, super heavy, it's a good form factor as well. The next pro is that there are three ways to charge the device. From the wall, solar, which we will talk about more in a second, and DC from the cigarette lighter port, which we will also talk about because there is a negative there, which you need to consider before purchasing this if you're interested in it for overland use. With the screen, I do like the fact that it shows you input and output, but it's not perfect. There is a con, and I will come back to that in just a second. To fully charge the device from the wall, it takes roughly eight hours, which isn't bad. Also, you could charge the device in roughly eight hours with a 120 watt solar panel, such as this. I will come back to this in just a second. Now, of course, when it comes to charging via solar, it really is all about the conditions. For myself here in North Carolina, on average, it takes me about two days to charge this device. And that's because the sky is always full of clouds. Very rarely do we have a just 100% sunny day. If you live out in big sky country where it's nice and dry, you have the sun shining down, you could charge it much, much faster. In optimal conditions, I would say that you could charge this via solar in roughly five hours. Now we need to focus on the cons here for a second. Con number one is that some devices simply will not show up on the output, such as this battery here. Right now, this battery is charging. This is a camera battery. And on the screen, it shows that there's no output at all. But if you go ahead and turn a light on, it now begins to read because there's enough power being drawn from the device. Lights off, no reading, but the battery is charging. I mentioned before that there is a con when it comes to this aluminum material. It will condensate. So if you're sleeping in the back of your truck with this device, it's humid. Condensation will form on the outside and more than likely on the inside as well. So I've had those nights where it's been nice and cold, around 20 degrees, wake up, things are a little bit damp, and this device is covered in moisture. That wouldn't happen if the device materials was 100% plastic. So it is a trade-off. You have the higher quality aluminum, it's nicer, the finish is good, it's going to handle more abuse, but it can condensate in certain situations. Next up, we have to talk about the bar system. Instead of having percentages, it's those bars. So as I mentioned before, you never know exactly what the power level is. While the previous con is somewhat important, this one is huge in my opinion, and it involves the cigarette lighter charging. So you plug this in, you plug this into your vehicle, and in my case, it's a 2011 Tundra. This device doesn't charge. And it's because my truck features 12 volt ports. You have to have a 24 volt port for this to charge, which is unfortunate. Maybe 24 volt cigarette lighter ports are becoming more common, but 
I don't have them in any of my vehicles, this truck or my wife's car or my son's vehicle. I've never seen them before. So yeah, I don't know. For overlanding, this is especially important. Unless you have a solar panel set up on top of your vehicle, you can't charge this device while cruising down the road unless you have that 24 volt port. That is a huge negative, in my opinion, for this device when it comes to the application of overlanding. Talking about overlanding for a second, that means that you cannot charge this device while cruising down the road with a refrigerator plugged in, for an example. If you have the 24 volt port, you're good to go. But if you have a 12 volt, this simply will not work. Before I summarize my review, let's go ahead and talk about what you receive if you purchase this device. So you get the battery station, you get the cigarette lighter charger. Of course, comes with this box. This is the wall charger. It's a pretty good size power brick. You receive this adapter cable so you can plug into other types of solar panels. Instruction manual. And folks, I believe that is it. And now everyone, I will summarize my review and tell you all what I think about this device. All in all, it works very well. Over the course of three, four months, I've had no issues. This thing has never shut off, it's never glitched out, it's worked perfectly. When it comes to the value of this device, it's not bad. At the time of filming, $490 for this power station, which is very comparable to other devices out on the market. The construction's good, the size is good, the weight's good, the functionality is good. It's not perfect. I don't like the power level indicator. In my opinion, that's almost worthless. Also, I don't like the fact that it doesn't show how much power is being used by smaller devices such as this battery charger. And ultimately, the biggest issue with this device is the fact that this will not charge on a 12 volt connection. That is a huge shame. For emergency use, backups, I think this works very well. You can easily charge it with solar and it does charge very quickly. What I have here is the Sowaki 120 watts solar panel and it works very, very well. With the 120 watt solar panels, those run roughly $290. They come in at almost 11 pounds and approximately it's 21 inches by 21 inches by roughly two and a half inches thick. Super easy to clean, easy to use. It's small when it folds up, you can stash them away. And my only complaint is that the stands on the back aren't the best. They could be a little bit more rigid and supportive, but it does get the job done as you can see. I like the fact that the solar panel does have a built-in charge controller, so you can charge devices directly from the solar panels, camera batteries, and so on. You can even charge your car battery with the alligator clips that are included. One more topic that I want to touch upon is this. With this company, I have not found a good way to contact their customer service as far as an actual telephone conversation. You could go on their website, you can send an email, but that's it. I've looked through the instructions, I've looked on the box, I've looked online. You cannot find a phone number for this company, and that does concern me somewhat. When you purchase a device like this, you want to make sure that you get a very good warranty. And with this brand here, I have to admit, I'm not all that familiar with it. I got it in because the price is good. And um, again, the quality has been great. But as far as a warranty goes, who knows? I have no idea. I did a little bit of searching, but I haven't seen any reports of people having problems or people not being able to contact the company. From what I understand, the company is rather new to the market and they are still building their reputation. But from what I understand, their reputation is good. So there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the G500. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you all think about this device? Do you have any experiences with this company? If so, please comment down below for everyone else to see. All in all, this is a good device, but it is lacking in some areas. And because of the limitations, namely in terms of charging, it may not work for everyone and their needs. For overlanding, if you don't have that 24 volt charging port, you may not want this. You may want to go with something else. Also, it should be mentioned with the inverter, 300 watt max, 150 watts each. There are other products out on the market that feature higher levels than this. So if you need more power, there are devices out there which can deliver more, but they may cost extra. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in for this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. My name is Luke. If you have a question, email me. Until next time, strength and honor. See ya.